Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So before I start this build guide, I want to go ahead and say that this is the first time I'm using, well, I'm using a new program to record with. So let me know what you guys think of the audio, video, etc. Um, and anyway, let's go ahead and get with this character. So this is the Arc Mine character I was playing originally. Um, I'm going to go over my gear and everything briefly, and then I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a tier 13 um, beyond, I guess, you can see the League Stones here. We're going to do Breach Beyond Bloodlines, uh, so you can kind of see how it interacts. Now, this is a level 93 hardcore crit low life arc mines character. Um, you can originally get the character started on about like 50 chaos. Obviously, you're not going to be low life with 50 chaos, but to get the character started, you only need a little bit of chaos. You can pretty much just use a Tabula Rasa until you can farm something. The main links we're going to be using is Increased Critical Strikes, Remote Mine, Minefield, Arc, Lightning penetration and trap and mine damage. Um, if you have a five link, just use you know trap. Just pull out trap and mine. Vice versa, you can for a four link, just pull out lightning pen. For our other links, I'm running faster casting, detonate mine spell totem. This essentially just detonates the mines for us when we're doing bosses for extra single target. Uh, smoke mine increased duration. Vault discipline. Vault clarity. Vault clarity is for single target uh, damage when you're just spamming mines out. Vault discipline is your only source of sustain. And smoke mine lasts almost 10 seconds and gives you a 30% movement speed buff. Um, we've also got just faster casting flame dash in my boots. Blood magic, blasphemy, temporal chains. You can use whatever you want for this. I just figured a temporal chains would be nice to prevent the melee mobs from hitting me. Uh, and in my helmet, I've got clarity, enlighten level 3, wrath, and discipline. Uh, just to go over my gear, I've got a pretty okay dagger, nothing too crazy. You do want to get a flat cold damage roll. If you don't want to use a dagger, you don't have to. The cold damage helps with shattering. Arc Chains Helmet, not required. Definitely one of the first um, things you should you should go for. Uh, the three additional chains ends up being crazy good, especially when you can get 10 chains per arc with minefield equals 30 chains. Presence of Chayula and Shavs go, to, uh, go together. Otherwise, you can just use a standard... Um, chest piece, really whatever you want. You could even use a skin of the loyal if you wanted to. I'm using a dream fragments because I'm lazy. It also is nice because the max mana and mono regen helps a lot. Uh, my other ring is pretty standard. Doesn't even have a, P a percent ES roll. 400 ES shield with some pretty decent spell crit. Rainbow strides because they have a really good enchant on them. Baited breath super good for our ES recharge because that's our only source of sustain. Uh, and then just standard gloves. All right, so let's go ahead and get the clear going. So, the other thing I want to state about this character is, despite mines being super clunky, I would say that Ark really does mines like some justice. So let me go ahead and show you guys how the character clears. I can't tell if I'm lagging from the video recording or if I'm lagging from the desecrated ground. This is also a character I would not really recommend for bossing. It totally could do bosses and whatnot. It's just I would recommend something more defensive if you're playing hardcore, maybe like a low-life righteous fire character or, I mean, I don't know, anything to do with totems. It just doesn't really have much source of sustain. Uh, and of course, these Desecrate maps also suck ass because you can never really trigger your ES recharge if you touch them. But that's also another reason why I wanted to kind of uh, show it in a map like this. Where's back? Yeah, so since Arc manually targets everything, I feel like it really does extremely well with mines. Another example of something like that would be like Frostbolt. Frostbolt would work really well with mines as well. Alright, so here's a breach. Here's an example of how you would use like Vault Clarity and Detonate Mines Totem. So I'm going to put the Totem up here, Vault Clarity's down. Now anything that gets in range of this Totem, the Totem will automatically go to cast. 
that makes sense. So you want to put the totem kind of close to where the monsters are, and then it'll pretty much, it'll just keep popping your minds anytime it gets scared. You don't really have to worry about, like, I would say the biggest annoyances with this build, don't run Domination, because Domination uh, will, Domination will put a bunch of rares together, and you have a chance of getting an ally shall not die. Ally shall not die is kind of annoying. It's not that bad. It's just when it's inside like a shrine, there's just so many monsters to hit from. Uh, the other thing is, allies shall not die totems suck because they never move, and Ark can just, you know, continuously chain between the same monster. Well, not the same one, but three in a little rotation. Um, and Proximity Shield is, despite what people say about Proximity Shield being bad, Proximity Shield monsters can actually die before their Proximity Shield goes up. If it's like a Beyond pack, you can actually one-shot the mob before the Proximity Shield goes up. So that's one thing. And the second thing is, you can just lay the mines and the monster can walk over it, and then you literally just press detonate, and then they all die. Alright, so that's pretty much how the character clears. Uh, I don't really have an issue with too much stuff. Map mods, you can pretty much do... Um, I mean, I've done like, Enfeeble, Monster Life, uh, Elemental Equilibrium, and the damage is, is honestly still fine. I would just stay away from like more than two damage mods, so don't run something like minus max with additional damage as lightning, fire, or ice. Just one damage mod's okay, I would not push towards two. And in terms of a bossing setup, maybe you could do something with like soul strike and um, I don't know, a plus three lightning gems bow or something. But that's for something else, I'm not really doing that, I've already got a bosser in this league, so. Anyway, let's talk about the skill tree and kind of how I progressed on it, and then I'll explain why I chose Sepator or Sepatois over pretty much anything else. So you can start off as a... Well, I mean, you pretty much have to start off as a, as a Shadow. You don't really have any other choice. Unless you want to go Occultist, you could be a little more bossing variant then, maybe? Um, or I don't know. Any, anything, really. So let's start with um, Ellie Damage into Trickery. Go across, Cold Heart Calculation. Come up, grab... Your Sceptor node. Move across here so that you can grab Volatile Mines. Uh, grab your Doom Cast. Come down. Clever Construction. High Explosives. Now these Trap Trigger area and Mine Detonation area nodes, I'm quite sure actually are very useful because what it basically means, don't mind it saying area. It What it means is it's the area that the, that the trap can detect or the, or the mine. So my arcs can detect like right here. So if a monster is here, and I'm all the way over here, and I detonate it, my arc can also chain like all the way like into this back room. So it ends up giving you off-screen potential clearing with arc, which is really, really cool. Uh, after that, you pretty much just follow the tree, and that's pretty much it. You, you just come across, grab crit multi, ES, etc., whenever you need. Uh, so some tricks with the mana, because that would be, I guess, like a better question to go on. Since arc does require quite a bit, this is 130 mana per cast. And, you know, when I'm just running around dropping them, it is quite a bit difficult to sustain. So I've got currently Dreamer and Deep Thoughts, which is four points, which is kind of a lot, along with a healthy mind. This is the important one. Uh, a viewer actually brought this up, and I completely disregarded and didn't even notice it. But instead of using an energy from within, because they're, like, ridiculously expensive, if you just use a healthy mind... This gives so much maximum mana in this one spot. Like, if you look at my mana right now, it actually goes down by 400. 400 mana with scaled off my percentages gives me 20 flat mana regen per second. But the important thing is that I now have 250 mana instead of 144, which for me is enough to drop two mines at a time, which is six, which is 60 chains. And that's more than enough to kill, like, anything in the map. Just, like, standard monsters. Uh, which is, like, perfect for me. I found my sweet spot. So I'm very happy with that. Also, Dream Fragments does help with that quite a bit. And that's kind of, like, why I like Dream Fragments. It's just a, a really short solution um, into getting the character going. So after that, you pretty much... The reason why I decided to pick the Saboteur Ascendancy is because Bomb Specialist gives you something pretty cool. Um, it gives you absolutely nothing. But Demolition Specialist gives you something even better, which basically gives you 100% increased arming speed. And arming speed is a stat that you cannot get anywhere else in the game. Maybe you can get it on a unique, I don't know. You cannot get it on jewels, it is not anywhere on the tree. And arming speed is basically, you put down the trap, the trap is now on the floor. The trap is considered on the floor, it now has to become armed. That arming speed is the difference between like a trap detonating in half a second and a trap detonating in like, I don't know. 0 0.2 of a second. It makes it feel so much smoother when you're running through, trap, detonate. Running through, trap, detonate. Um, and that's kind of the reason why I wanted it. Another thing that you get is 
You get 40% increased damage when you detonate mines recently. It's nothing crazy, but it's nice. It's 40% increased damage. 20% mine laying speed is very good because that's clear speed. Uh, it's also single target damage if you can just keep continuously shitting out mines. And then 20% chance when placing a mine to place an additional mine. So instead of placing three arc mines, I can create four, which turns it from 30 chains into 40 chains, which is really cool. Explosive Expert's nice because you get 10% penetration, um, and that's pretty much about it. You get, what, 10% reduced damage taken from traps and mines. I don't think that does anything. And these little baby nodes are very good. So like, Ellie damage all res is nice. Mine laying speed, LA damage. Mine laying speed, LA damage. And my Uber lab would just be mine laying speed, LA damage, and LA damage and movement speed. Um, but I haven't really gone around to doing that because I really don't like running Labyrinth on characters with no sustain. Um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. As for your jewels, you want to make sure you prioritize crit multi. Crit multi is going to be, I believe, your highest scaling stat. You could get something like mine damage if you wanted as well. Uh, your bandits, you're going to do kill, kill, and Alira. You sustain all of your power charges through Blast Cascade, uh, which helps you out quite a bit. And you can start leveling this character literally from level like 10 or 11. Whenever you get Arc going, like I think it's before Murbel, you can start immediately. It does feel a bit slow up until you get your um, your Ascendancy, which is your, well, your Cruel Ascendancy, which is Demolition Specialist for the arming speed. But it still is pretty nice. Um, and one of the last things I'd probably tell you is that wise oak is going to be your best friend because we scale flask effect in this build as almost all ci builds slash low life builds do flask effect is amazing because not only is it a defensive aspect well it's defensive and offensive at the same time paired with utility it gives you movement speed on your quicksilver it gives you an additional six percent mitigation on your basalt flask and an additional 6% penetration on your Wise Oak. And that's very important because that allows us to hit 90% lightning penetration. Actually, we're 91% penetration now, uh, which is just absolutely absurd. Uh, and this is the reason why I didn't really have to think about Inquisitor. I'm not saying Inquisitor is bad, Inquisitor is insane, but when you're hitting 91 penetration without a curse at all, like, it's just, it feels really good. It super feels good, man, you know? You don't have to worry about bypassing elemental resistance because you're pretty much good. Um, and that's what I really like. So anyway, that's pretty much going to be it uh, for the character. Of course, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop them down below. Uh, this is kind of just something I, th <coughs> excuse me, I threw together really quickly so you guys can kind of get started on it. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much about it. If you guys like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys have a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. And I'll see you boys all tomorrow.